What's up, Twin Cities? It's your girl, Glam Life Kim. It's one after the one o'clock hour, and I am in the building with one of my favoritest people in the Twin Cities, have Mr. I, Anthony Taylor. Have I ever told you my favoritest person, oh, too? Oh, you know what? You have. Yeah, I, I, take I have. I take that. I take that. <laughs> Anybody saying anything different, man, they don't know. They don't know. See? Yeah. Well, that's good, sis. How you been? You know what? I have been under the weather for the last yeah. couple weeks, so I'm trying to get myself back at 100. Right. Yes. Yeah, so if y'all, you know, hear me sounding like a grown man. Man. Oh, okay. <laughs> they be like, that don't sound like that Kim. Don't sound like yeah, it. we're like, what's going on? Who is I'm that? A deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, that, that but that sultry is 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 good. Though. Man, I'm trying to get it. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> yeah, I flipped it on you. See, <laughs> I flipped it on you. Man, that that soulful, sultry sound. People ain't tripping on that. Mm-mm. Go ahead. <laughs> that is too funny. <laughs> But I'm glad you're here. I am, too. Yeah. I'm thankful. Blessed to see another day. It's beautiful. Absolutely. Sunny out there. Absolutely. That makes us happy. <laughs> I, I know it did. I thought about you Monday when all that snow hit. I'm right. like, I know Kim up here like, man, this is a <laughs> Right. Because <laughs> I was, too. I'm like, this is a Right. <laughs> Right. I'm not going to lie, though. This time, this is probably one of the first times that I was a little happy to see snow okay. just because I know that those plants <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. and flowers, they yeah. needed it, it a little needed. water it, it and they needed. needed to get covered up a little bit so that our sinuses would act right. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and, and we also needed to get slapped in the face. That too. Yeah. That we, too. We, we ain't got touched, you know, this whole entire time. Nah, so. It's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. Right. Mm-hmm. For, for, for us. People who like minded, right? <laughs> right. There's some right. other folks like this one because yeah. ain't no snow, right? Right. So, yeah. yeah. So. so it was good for us. <laughs> yeah, man. Good to see you. Always a pleasure to you ride with too. you every uh, second and fourth Monday of or Wednesday of the month. My name is Anthony Taylor with the City of Minneapolis. Welcome uh, to Minneapolis 360. Always, always my privilege to be here riding shotgun with Graham Life Kim, trying to bring you information that hopefully. Is helpful. Hopefully, it can make you activate. It Hopefully, it can make you conscious. Hopefully, it can make you happy. There's a lot of things I think mm-hmm. uh, this show is about, right? So, and it's mm-hmm. all about the people. So, uh, we got a really good show today, mm-hmm. Kim. And it's yeah. one of the shows that I think we have never done before. Nope, it's a first. It's a first, y'all. So, we're going to talk about the ADA uh, Action Plan Engagement. So, the ADA is American. With people, uh, Americans with Disability Act. Uh, if you know about it, I got the or you don't know about it, I got the perfect person, my colleague, to come on and talk about that, right? Because we think about people with disabilities and the laws and the and the rules and everything else, and how we update and inform people on what that really means is is really big. And mm-hmm. this person's new to the city, but has been on boots on the ground working to make sure that we update this action plan because it's been a while. So. He'll give you some history on ADA and kind of what we're going forward and some engagements around that. So if you're really interested or know some people or family uh, with disabilities, I think this is super important. And we all mm-hmm. know somebody, right? Yes. We all know somebody. Yes. You know, some people tell me I, I got a few disabilities myself. Right. And it's not paying so attention. Sorry. I don't know if that's <laughs> it, but they, 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 they tell me that I, I, I need to do some work on paying attention to people. But uh, anyway, listen, before we get started, just a, a couple Quick reminders about some things. You know, we have uh, some local resources and opportunities for immigrants and refugees. Uh, the Office of Immigrant, Immigrant and Refugees, uh, Refugee Affair, always has some legal services available. You can get some shelter resources, some health care. Stop by the uh, South Minneapolis Career Force at 777 East Lake Street. These are open office hours. So the next open office hours are Wednesday, 2 to 4, and they're April 3rd, 17th, 24th, 24th and 1st. So, um, we know, we got a lot of our, uh, our our folks coming into this country and in this city, and we're trying to help them. So if you need any type of information, uh, the Immigrant uh, Office of Immigrant and Refugee Affairs is always available uh, at the Career Force Center at 777 East Lake Street. Um, listen, Minneapolis, I think I had talked to people a lot over the last couple of months and actually years about being able to activate in community. And there's a lot of stuff going on that people can uh, provide input. One of the things I really want to talk about is the uh, George Floyd Square. And they're having a dinner dialogue tomorrow at Sabathony. Uh, Food will be provided. Uh, You're able to go and just talk about what you want to see, the visions uh, for you and your community around George Floyd Square. We know how important that is. And there's been a lot of conversation over the last year or two mm-hmm. about what that looks like. There's been plenty of opportunities for folks to weigh in on what they want 
uh, George Floyd Square to look like. So this event is six to eight at Sabathony. I will be there in person. Uh, I think it's just uh, vitally huge to be able to uh, go in and get your, your voices heard. heard. So mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, also, too, y'all, the city has awarded uh, the first round of opiate uh, settlement funds. So the city is expected to receive about $18 million over 18 years wow. uh, for opioid uh, relief and treatment and focus on really on recovery, uh, health, treatment, uh, emergency room visits, just some to reduce some of these disparities that we're having in this city. So if you want information, go to the city's website, uh, Minneapolis.gov, search opioid. Uh, it's important, but we know how that's a problem in our uh, yeah, community, community, Kim, yeah, and it it's, is. it's real. Right? It is. I'm glad that they're putting some money towards, you know, hopefully it can do some help and can get into the hands of some people who can actually Put it to good use. Absolutely, absolutely, and 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 focus on a lot of different areas. You can't just really necessarily focus on recovery if you don't focus on treatment. Right, right? It's, all of that is a holistic approach. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's coming. If you need more information about some of the organizations that were awarded some funds, uh, Minneapolis.gov search opioid. Um, one of the, the the biggest things I think, uh, folks, I want people to really understand too. Uh, is the fact that make sure you're informed. Go to the city's website. There's Upper Harbor Terminal things that are happening in our community. There's the First Avenue reconstruction over there, Kim, where they're going to completely re- uh, redo some of the areas over there right. by Lake Street and Hiawatha and Franklin. Just really dig a lot into going that. On, yeah. And also the Office of Community Safety is going to be having some meetings too. Uh, coming up, there was actually uh, one tonight. If you're interested at Powderhorn from six to eight, mm. uh, there is a community Southside Community Safety Center meeting for folks to weigh in about what they want uh, that building to be, which is big. Yeah, right? that's awesome. This is big. So, so go on and get your voice yeah, heard. Get your voice heard, and y'all like the best way to engage is to meet people, and food is provided. So man, you can never go wrong. They can with never food. go wrong with that. <laughs> They never go wrong you with know, that. We love, you know, we love to have conversation and food. And food, absolutely. <laughs> but bottled water, none of that tap right. water. So we're talking about that. <laughs> if y'all been listening to the show, y'all know what we're talking about. Right. right? So enough said. <laughs> enough you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I want to bring in my homeboy, mm. Guthrie Bard, from the city of Minneapolis, talking about ADA, Americans with Disability Act. Guthrie, first timer. Welcome <laughs> to KMOJ, brother. Welcome. How you feeling? Thank you, Anthony. I'm feeling well, doing well. Thank you for having me on your program. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Let's get into it, man. So uh, tell us a little bit about you, your history, where you where you come from. Like, what's Guthrie's story? Yeah. Uh, so I'm uh, from Minnesota uh, and I spent my entire uh, life here with the exception of two years. I uh, lived in Atlanta for two years, getting my master's uh, in public health down there. Uh, and I've spent my entire career uh, in the disability uh, rights, disability justice field. I've, uh, uh, I have a sister with a developmental disability, and so I grew up kind of in that brother and, and advocate role. Uh, and so, you know, this work is, is both personal and professional uh, for me. Uh, so, um, you know, I'm excited to be here and to talk about this topic. I think it's important that uh, that we understand the Americans with Disabilities Act and we just understand disabilities uh, in general better. So thank you. Absolutely. And, and and this is kind of the first time well overdue to be on this show to talk about it as you have uh, started to enter this role. I mean, you've really, really, really been able to put a lot of work into uh, updating this action plan. So b- before we kind of get to that, like talk about like the mm-hmm. ADA, some of the history around ADA because folks maybe know the initials. They, they maybe know it. it's mm-hmm. called the American with Disability Acts. But, you know, mm-hmm. give us a little bit more information on what exactly ADA is. Yeah. So ADA or Americans with Disabilities Act. So it's for people uh, with disabilities. It's uh, uh, essentially any type of disability, if it's physical or if it's mental. Uh, so we're talking about uh, anything from, you know, being deaf or hard of hearing to schizophrenia or autism, uh, being in a wheelchair. Uh, and the ADA was passed. Uh, it'll be 34 years uh, ago that it was passed. So the anniversary is July 26th. 
uh, of 1990. So this is wow. a, a law that has been in place for a very long time. Um, but I think as you've mentioned, while it's been around for a very long time, it's something that a lot of folks need to be educated about, uh, especially those who have disabilities or know people who have disabilities. You mentioned earlier, everybody's affected by disabilities, either personally, uh, you know, or in their families, their friends, uh, and we all will eventually have some sort of disability. Uh, and I think it's something that we need to kind of understand and grapple with. But this is a, it's a law that, uh, again, it's, it's a civil rights law for people with disabilities. And so the idea is that in public, uh, so including, you know, where you work, schools, transportation, voting, uh, that there are, uh, uh, you know, there are requirements to make sure that if you are a person with a disability, that you have the same access right. to that, uh, to those services as anybody else. So it's extremely important that this law uh, be, be better understood because it really does impact nearly everybody, uh, uh, you know, at some point in their life. Absolutely. Talking with Guthrie Bard, City of Minneapolis, Neighborhood and Community Relations about the ADA action plan and the update. So a lot of people talk about action plans, right? And and, and mm-hmm. sometimes I understand some of them, sometimes I don't. The city mm-hmm. has a, a ADA action plan. So like, tell us about, about that. Like, what is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And first off, I want to say, too, that with the ADA, you know, this is something that, you know, you don't need to apply for. It's not a benefit program or anything like that. This is something that uh, if you have questions about, if you feel like you've been discriminated against based on a disability, contact the city. Uh, You can contact me directly, and I'll give my contact information out. We want to make sure that there's a relationship between the city and you if you're feeling discriminated against based on a disability. And this uh, action plan is something that the city has had uh, going back to 2015, and uh, it is uh, an all-encompassing document, so it's similar to what the city has in place called the ADA Transition Plan, which is really sidewalks, it's curb cuts, those kinds of things that are uh, uh, managed by public works. The ADA Action Plan is something that our, uh, or my uh, department manages, the Department of Neighborhood and Community Relations, and it's all about programs and services and policies and things like that, thinking about meetings that the city is setting up, whether it's virtual or in person, person, making sure that those are accessible, that people can ask for accommodations or modifications to documents, uh, materials, things like that, that our website is accessible. If you are somebody who's blind or of low vision, you might use something called a screen reader to have that information read out to you. Uh, We need to make sure that we have a plan in place to make sure that uh, our websites are accessible to those folks. So all of that is wrapped into this ADA action plan and it impacts every department here at the city. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm so glad that you are uh, on top of this and working because it's all about having the same accommodations for everybody, right? You're not excluding, Mm -hmm. you're making sure that it's accessible for everybody and and all uh, able-bodied or non-able-bodied folks. I think that's important. And, And so you talk about that and I think it's really um, it's really necessary for people to, to understand because I, I think a lot of times we just look for people who are able-bodied through our only lens, mm-hmm. right, Guthrie? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes, that's correct. And, you know, I think that it's not until we either experience a disability that we understand how disabling just being in society can be, how other people will talk differently to us or look differently at us, that kind of thing. And so I think one of the, uh, one of the, uh, important aspects of the action plan and of the city is that we need to have more people with different experiences, lived experiences, informing what we do, informing what I do, informing what the department, the Department of Neighborhood and Community Relations does, what other departments do. And so one of the things that we spell out in the action plan is what are we doing to bring other people into the city? And so uh, one thing that I'm very proud of for the city is that we have had an advisory committee for people with disabilities going back to 1976. Uh, And this is an opportunity for people with various disabilities living in the city to hear 
uh, from city officials, from uh, from staff about the work that they're doing and provide input on it early on so it actually makes a difference in the work that's going out there. So it could be about, you know, First Avenue being reconstructed yeah. or it could be uh, about some other uh, project occurring at the city that they are actually advising on early on. So that's an important aspect of this uh, plan as well that I want to make sure is shared out. Yeah, absolutely. Guthrie Bard. Uh, neighborhood and Community Relations, City of Minneapolis, talking about the Americans with Disabilities Act action plan. And, right, this show, uh, Guthrie, is all about, like, informing, right, and having folks activate. So if I'm listening right now mm-hmm. as a listener, like, how yep. can I get involved uh, in this process? Yeah. No, that's a great question. Uh, So there's going to be a couple opportunities for folks to be involved. One that never ends, that's always open, uh, is uh, to contact me directly and to talk about disabilities. You feel feel comfortable in doing that, to talk about ways that the city can be better uh, at supporting communities. Uh, So uh, folks can contact me directly so I can give my email address out and my direct phone number. Uh, And so it's uh, first name, it's Guthrie, G-U-T-H-R-I-E dot Bayard, B as in Bravo, Y-A-R-D, as in David, at MinneapolisMN.gov. Or they can give me a call at 612-554-3666. Uh, and another uh, opportunity is, so we have a survey out, so we're trying to get input. So we've got a survey out for staff, and we also have one out for community in a bunch of different languages to get a better understanding of if you have a disability, even if you don't and you support somebody who does, what does it mean to have a disability? Where do you want the city to be supporting you or to be taking action on things? Uh, so it's not just about the ADA. It's more so about just understanding disability and um more so around disability justice and what it means to to, to feel good uh, with yourself, even if you have a disability. Uh, and so folks can take that survey if they go to MinneapolisMN.gov backslash ADA hyphen plan. Uh, they can uh, access that. And uh, otherwise, if folks want to give me a call or send me an email, I can make sure that I get them access to that survey as well. And Anthony, I do want to say that in the coming months here, we're going to have community listening sessions. So we're going to have them in language across cultural communities. Uh, and so there'll be more to share uh, in the next month or so about opportunities for folks to actually convene in person uh, to share their thoughts. Absolutely. So I want to make sure folks understand you can call him 612-554-3666. The survey, y'all, is definitely important. You can take them in language. Go to Minneapolis.gov slash ADA uh, slash uh, ADA plan. Uh, by April uh, 14th, I think is 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 Riley Hughes. That's correct. Yep. April yep. 14th. Yep. We we want people to make sure that they are taking that survey so we can be well informed about the next steps. Uh, and and Guthrie, just real quick, we're going to move around a little bit as we get up against the clock a little bit, just to talk about like y- you know. I think there's a lot of key words that that people take away when they hear any type of conversation, right? So we say ADA, we got to understand about that. We know about uh, disabilities. People kind of understand about that. And when we say a lot of things, mm-hmm. there's certain key words that just really stick and resonate with people. And one of them is like jobs, right? So you said ADA mm-hmm. covers jobs. So like, what does that mean uh, for employers, right? Mm-hmm. To being able to make yeah. sure that 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 is meeting accommodations for their folks. Talk to mm-hmm. talk to us about that briefly. Yeah, uh, public or private. If you are an employer and you have fifteen or more employees, you are required to provide what's called reasonable accommodations to employees uh, based on their disability. So. Uh, when you think, so, you know, someone might say, well, what is a reasonable accommodation? So an accommodation may be uh, providing or modifying equipment on the job for somebody to be able to do that work, restructuring their job so that they're still carrying out the core functions of that job, but it's being restructured a bit. Uh, you might be modifying a work schedule uh, or um you might be uh, providing, um, you know, interpreters uh, on site uh, or making the workplace more digitally or physically accessible. And, you know, what I want to just mention, too, is that it's not just for people who are already employed there, but it does impact the recruitment or the hiring process. So that's why it's really important for employers uh, and uh 
for those working in HR to really understand the ADA, understand reasonable accommodations, because you may get a request during the hiring process uh, for an interview to have an interpreter on site or to have materials in different uh, formats. So it's really important to know that that's something that can come through. Uh, now, you might be asking yourself, well, what is reasonable? Why is that word used? What does reasonable mean in, the, in, in this case? And it, what it means is that it cannot impose what's called an undue hardship uh, on that employer. So that would be something that is significantly difficult to undertake. So like operationally, uh, staff wise, it's just impossible to do that and then still carry out uh, uh, the organization's functions, uh, or it's expensive. It's just, it would impact the organization's ability to fundamentally do what it's supposed to do because it's too expensive. Uh, so there are opportunities to, um, uh, to not take on an accommodation, but an employer should always be looking for uh, some accommodation that will work for that individual, whether they're uh, applying for that job or they're already there on the job. There should be some uh, process to really identify a way to make it work. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's vitally important. And I'm going to skip around again because two mm -hmm. things I want to talk about. And one of them is like these some of these older buildings that, you know, folks have and might want to say, well, this is this is before the the, the act, right? Mm -hmm. But to go back mm -hmm. onto what you were talking about to piggyback off that, right? So like what if I what if I got a complaint? Like what if I feel like I've been discriminated? What about like if if something that just is not really uh, fitting into uh, the ADA law, like mm -hmm. what can I yep. do, Guthrie, if I feel that way? Yeah. So, you know, I mentioned before, it's really important that people know the laws that impact them, especially these broad laws uh, like the ADA. It's really important to just know what does it mean for you as an individual. Uh, and I also say that it, you don't need to know uh, every letter in the law. You don't need to know every detail in the law. And so it's just a, it's a feeling, you know, that it's like, I've, I'm feeling discriminated against. I have a disability. I identify as having a disability. Uh, I, something needs to happen about it. We ask that folks contact 311. That's the place that then it gets uh, to the right people. So it'll get to me. Uh, I'll be able to work with you directly on that. Uh, and it's important to be able to have that documented so that we can move forward on those things. Uh, and it could be something like there's a lack of a, a wheelchair ramp at a business that you go to or at the uh, apartment complex that you live at. It's an inaccessible entrance, so the door's really heavy to open and close. Uh, it could be that, you know, you might be in a wheelchair and the counter is too high and you can't see over it, those kinds of things. It could also be something around communication. So, like, you you have asked for uh, materials in an alternative format and it hasn't been granted and then you feel like, uh, it's something that should have been granted, those kinds of things. Uh, we want to hear about it so that we can work with you and really figure out what could be a solution. Yeah, and I, I think that's important because, I, Kim, there's people out there that have felt and, and feel discriminated against or these accommodations so. aren't up to standard, Are, right? Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely. Um, and I wanted to talk about that because you talked about jobs and we get into like, okay, like how do we – make sure that we're being treated fairly. What can we do? How can we uh, make sure that our voices are heard? So I wanted to get to that. And as I go back to this, right, mm -hmm. I was in, in junior, I was a junior in high school in, in 1990. I'm going to date myself because I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm proud 50, y'all. But there's a, I yeah. was, I was in, uh, I was a junior in high school in, in 1990. And I know my building was, was old. And I know there was a lot of, other buildings around me that was built way before the ADA uh, action plan or the ADA started to be a law. Talk about like, are there buildings mm -hmm. or facilities that are not required to comply with ADA? Yeah. That's a great question. You know, there's a myth around buildings being grandfathered in, you know, and other uh, in other scenarios, you know, you might hear that phrase, you know, Oh, it's been grandfathered in. And the deal is with buildings, that have been around since 1990 uh, or before 1990, which are a lot of buildings in the city, um, they do, in fact, need to uh, uh, adhere to the ADA. Now, if that building uh, was uh, – so it's a building that was constructed before 1990. Uh, if it doesn't make a single 
renovation or adjustment to anything, it can stay as it is. But for, you know, buildings that are that old, we're talking about 34 years old, they're going to make some adjustments at some point. And it's at that point that they need to be in compliance uh, with the current standards. And so, you know, while there's no grandfathering in, there is a safe harbor uh, provision. That's what they refer to it as a safe harbor that allows buildings to maintain as they uh, are unless they're altered. And so then if, again, if they're altered, uh, you know, could even be, uh, you know, uh, switching out uh, light switches and things like that, anything like that, then that's where it comes into play. If a, a permit is being pulled, that's where the new uh, standards come into play. And so if you're an employer or even if you're an employee and you feel like you're in an old building, it's not accessible, it should be accessible, again, give us a call. We can work with our permitting folks here, uh, construction services, uh, and others to, to figure out, you know, where the law applies there. What about apartments, Guthrie? That is a good question. Uh, so apartments, the ADA does not strictly cover residential, like private residential apartments and homes. That's where the fair housing right. act comes into play. And that's where you're still going to want to contact the city. I get a lot of questions in my six months I've been here. I get a lot of apartment questions, inaccessible issues at apartments, uh, elevators being down, doors being too heavy, especially at uh, senior uh, facilities. Folks are a little bit older and uh, these places just aren't uh, 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 up to date. And so we get a lot of those questions. And so a lot of times it falls under the Fair Housing Act. And that covers private places. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be your rental agencies, things like that. Uh, and, it, you know, the Fair Housing Act goes beyond just people with disabilities. And so that's likely going to fall into, into place here. But still give us a call and we'll talk about it. Uh, and we can still advocate with you. All right. OK. I just wanted to be clear because not all of us live in, in houses and those type of things. And, and, and real quick, Guthrie, so like does ADA cover asylum seekers coming to this country? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the nice thing about the ADA is that it covers everybody in America. So it's everyone in the U.S., regardless of immigration status. If you live in the U.S., uh, and even if you're a tourist, uh, the ADA uh, offers protections. And so I think that it's important for folks to know that the ADA is there as, uh, as support for you as you go along in life, as you age, as you come up against barriers, uh, things like that, there are, there's opportunities to get over and around those barriers. And the ADA is one of them in the city of Minneapolis is another one as well. So uh, again, don't hesitate to give us a call uh, or send an email. Uh, we want to hear from you. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. And I, I appreciate you coming on the show to, to talk about it. This is kind of a first time. I'd love to have you back to come on here and talk about some of the, the, the things you heard uh, when the engagement opportunities uh, come around. But I think it's, it's really important. And for somebody who's been on the job, you know, less than a year, I think this is really good work how you've been able to uh, make changes in that. So somebody's is really being intentional and, and paying attention to it is, is really appreciated. So, hey, but listen, listen, all right? You have got to, you ready? You, I'm going to throw you a curveball. Yeah. You ready? I know. I was waiting hey, for Wait, it. okay, here it come, man. So if there is <laughs> is uh, one band that you had a chance to go see, just one, mm-hmm. out of any band mm-hmm. that's ever played in any music in any era or decade, you got two <laughs> tickets, yeah. all expense played trip, <laughs> where would you go and who would you see? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, man, I'm going to, so I'm going to, I'm going to flip it a little bit in that I, I I was thinking, you know, initially of like, what is the best, uh, what's the best concert I've ever been to? And, uh, you know, the, the one that came to mind was, uh, so I waited, uh, outside target center for two hours when Prince came by in 2007, and this was on Prince Rogers Nelson day. Uh, and, uh, if folks remember, he played three gigs that night. Uh, so he played at Macy's before that, and then uh, Target Center, and then he played at First Ave. And in fact, it was the last time he played at First Ave. Uh, and it was the first time uh, in, since, I think, the late 90s that he had even played in Minneapolis. And that show was, uh, it was amazing. Uh, and in uh, thinking about Pris- 
Prince and his output, uh, I'd probably want to go back to uh, like the early '80s and to hear him uh, play. You know, for uh, f- for folks who um, have the time, I'd say check out the deluxe version of "Sign of the Times" or 1999. There's like 30 or 40 extra tracks that didn't make it onto the album where he plays most of the instruments and it's every genre mm-hmm. of music. I mean, I'm fully convinced he's the best pop musician of all time. All right. That's what's up. Yep. See, that's, that's the yeah. best Prince. answer. That's the, I, man. I, I, I think that's two for Prince. So yeah, <laughs> then we talk. Hey, yeah. Hey, uh, good job, bro. Thank you for coming on, man. Appreciate you. Uh, and, and you know, have a, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. I appreciate it. Yep. yep, thank you. Have a good day. You too. Like, yeah, that's that's big, right? The ADA action plan, I think, is, is huge. People with disabilities be able to update that, Kim. Yeah. So I think that's super important. We got to stay up with the time. Yeah, that's facts. 